Her style is instantly recognizable. If you've shopped for art on the Tezos blockchain, you've likely come across her work. Today, we're going to welcome Flora Marquez, an artist based out of Cordoba, Argentina, to discuss art, NFTs, and what Flora has planned in the coming weeks and months ahead. Artist Journal, April 26, 2023, broadcasting live to the world from Berlin and New York City on Rug Radio via Twitter Spaces. My name is Adrian Pocabelli, and we welcome back co-host, artist, and conversationalist to the show, Rune Tune. Rune, how is your week going? It's been going good. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a very socially active week. Oh, do tell. What is the latest in New York City? I imagine the weather is better than it is out here in Berlin. Uh, maybe. It's still a little brisk, which I actually appreciate. I like to ride my bike, so it keeps me from getting too sweaty whenever I'm out and about. But, uh, you know, people are starting to come out from under the rocks of hibernation and, you know, went to a few parties. Actually, one of my friends, he was born and raised Brooklyn boy, has just moved to Florida. And he had his last day last week. So there was a very, very big party for him. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I stayed out till the late hours of the morning. Another New Yorker going to Florida. Yep. Is that a bit of a trend out in New York? It is. Really? It is. Yeah. Ever since I got here about eight years ago, it's, it's something I've noticed. It's almost like the place that old New Yorkers retire to. Well, I could imagine, and like, there's no income tax, at least on the state level, from what I understand over there. Which, like, right. I mean, yeah, that must be a draw, especially with remote work, you know. So, yeah, I mean, right. here, I mean, it feels like, you know, the winter air is still here. We've had a few days where it's been kind of nice out, you know, luckily on the weekend, actually, it kind of felt like spring, but man, it's cool out there these days right now so hopefully that turns around mm -hmm. and so anyways flora i'm so thrilled that you agreed to come on the show you're one of the first artists i've seen you know when i started collecting and who really turned my head with all your stamps and everything anyway flora how are you doing you're calling from argentina hello everyone how are you it's great hello, to hear your welcome. voice <laughs> Nice to meet you. I'm so excited to be here. Well, yeah, I mean, the few, the feeling is mutual, and I'm, <laughs> I'm sure with Runetune as well there. Uh, so, Flora, tell us, how are things going? And, you know, just to get us started here, uh, I guess, how is your day today, just out of curiosity? Well, my day today is I just drink my coffee, and I'm listening to you guys. I'm talking to you. And after this, I'm going to do my daily drawing. I try every day to do it like early, but not not every day uh, happens <laughs> that. So today I'm going to do it um, early. And then I have to work. I do freelance work as a graphic designer. Then I'm going to visit my mother and my grandmother common things <laughs> it sounds great and i mean there's so many things i already want to ask you i mean whether it's the state of argentina and its inflation but i'm more actually <laughs> oh my just, God. you actually give us a quick like update like what is that like i mean it, it, i assume well, it affects I, you we in argentina we are so um used to inflation i think i was born in inflation i don't know a reality without inflation you know we have uh, our peso is so devaluated i everything is so expensive and everything is so impossible to do it's really difficult here is that yes. how you like i noticed i talked to bazaya just over text who's also at argentina a few months ago yeah. and is that how you got into you know nfts and because you people usually start with crypto and it seems like yes. argentinians you know start with all the inflation it's a real you know opt out or a real you know way of solving the inflation issue at least somewhat yes it is because in in some in some way you're uh, you're gaining you're doing some income in in a currency that already is more valuable than your country <laughs> currency you know our argentine peso is so low and so if you if you gain something in usdt or anything 
you're going to be able to uh, unleash. I, I, in my case, uh, last year I was able to save some money that it was something impossible for me to do the previous year. So, or for example, in my case, I was able to buy um, an iPad and my computer and some things that in my head it was in even possible to do the previous years, you know? It's really, really expensive to afford uh, an iPad or something like that. Well, absolutely. And what I wonder is like in Argentina, do they let you in a sense buy crypto or do they tr try and keep you out of crypto? No, it's, it's like um, something that it's out of the law. Yeah, like it's illegal. Yes, yes. If, to buy, to you... put your pesos into crypto. But if you just... Yes, because... Yeah, we, go ahead. we can't uh, we can't buy we can't buy dollars we have an amount of dollars that we can buy every month we are not allowed to buy dollars so you have to have pesos and you have to buy dollars in in places that are illegal you know so crypto is at this moment is like in a blind spot i think because government didn't do anything yet but i think it's going to be some it they are going to do something because a lot of people is buying or selling dollars through that way yeah the black market i mean yes yeah i mean I, the challenges you must face i mean and with if it's you know not legal to buy dollars you could just imagine that they want to you know shut down crypto it's interesting they haven't yet though so mm. th that is interesting no not to get uh, distracted by the finances, because we could literally talk for an hour about that and probably be fascinating, at least. For and me. I hope I have no idea on finances. I'm talking without knowing anything. So yeah, yeah, no. Change but, the subject. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll do because actually, and I'm very excited to ask you a few questions. Say on the daily drawing, you mentioned you do it in the morning. I think that's really interesting. Actually, as a matter of fact, I kind of went to bed. I had a good night's sleep, but I woke up at five today. And I found I did a yeah. lot more art. And is, is that kind of your secret weapon? Like you mentioned, you like to do it in the morning. Uh, no. And no. No, <laughs> no. I don't have any secret we weapon. I try to do it in the morning, but sometimes it's 11.58 and I didn't finish the, the daily drawing. And I, I have to do it in the, in the last minutes of the day. And it's really stressing because I want to to mint it in the in the same day you know i don't want to accumulate the drawings i just want to to draw it and, and mint it in the same day so yes i try to do it in the morning so in that way i will be relaxed in the rest of the day what was the original inspiration to do the daily drawing well the thing is that i have i have an uncle and he's a philosopher and he's a really interesting person and he once told me about this 10 years before i was it was 2013 i think when we met and he told me about this greek artist that had this phrase nulla dies sine linea that means that every day you have to do something whatever you do if you write if you draw every day you have to do something about this because in that way you will always be better if you exercise and it hasn't it doesn't have to be something perfect i always have that that in mind it doesn't have to be something perfect you have to do what you have to do and what i am going to do today it will be different than tomorrow and i think that's that's really really interesting to to look what you're capable of doing every single day and you are going to improve and you're going to be you're going to have different ideas and you are going to evolve i think that's such a a powerful idea to i'm someone who I, I love i love hearing about just different ways of thinking that kind of open up doors for you know artistic liberation and that sounds like uh that gave you the type of philosophy and and thinking that you needed to kind of venture onto this path do you remember the name of the greek philosopher your uncle was talking about yes he was apelles ah got you thank you apelles apuleius is it maybe <laughs> yes was he the person that wrote the golden ass 
I don't have I don't have let me, because let me look actually I'm kind of curious while I'm doing that though I you know one of the things I love about because I think a lot of us feel okay we've kind of heard it you start your own little business and you should do something every day but I think what's kind of special about what you're doing is you're finishing because I can you know make a few lines on my iPad and then kind of walk away and say, look, I, <laughs> yes. I did something every day and it doesn't actually add up. But when you're forced to finish, there's nothing like a deadline, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, um, I, I, I think it's great how we, the artists or the people that do what we do, have different ways of creating. I love to see how my friends, for, for instance, I have a lot of friends that are artists that uh, they create in a different and in a very different way that I create. They took a lot of time in one piece and they add details and they add lines and they are days and days adding uh, and doing things in one piece. And I think that's amazing. And I think that's so interesting. And that's so different from the way that I create because I have not that, I am not that patient. I have days in which I feel that way and I create that way, you know, but in my daily, my daily life, I, I like to create and give away. I, I, I like to do and release, you know, and I think that we create in such different ways and that's the, the exciting and the nice thing about art, the different ways that we create. I love it. It's also, as an artist, sometimes you get kind of bored with your work. Like I've been there where it's like, yes. it, and it's total torture. I used to spend <laughs> two years on two paintings and I did that for like three years and I made six oh paintings. God. Yeah. So, and like, <laughs> I'll never forget that, like what I call a Copernican revolution in my head when I said, screw it, I'm gonna make one <laughs> painting tonight. And then I kind of like that painting, you know, more than the ones I was working a year on, you know? Yes, so... but you get bored the same way. I get bored doing one different drawing every day and I get bored of myself too. So <laughs> we, we are like, that's the, the, the thing about artists, we get bored. Something that I've done well, something I still do, but uh, a practice that I've developed over the years is that it's always good to be working on at least three art projects at a time. And yes. uh, jumping between the different three can sometimes help you see what, what one is worth putting time into. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't even have to like understand what's worth putting time into. You just want to work on something more than, you know, another thing. And then things happen and art gets made. Of course. Yes. So when you do your daily drawings, I mean, are you working on, because you have a lot of different collections. You have the stamp collection, you have your, you know, your, your stuff on foundation, your stuff on object. Yes. Um, are you usually working on multiple projects at a time? Yes. Yes, I have my comic diary. It's an autobiographical comic that I'm doing since 2020. I do that while I'm doing other things. I'm doing this project of daily drawings. I wanted to do some some things to mint in the foundation that I did. What else? Yes, I'm always trying. I am. I will always thinking about new projects. I always get bored and I always want to do something else. But something that I learned was that we don't have to quit. If you if you get bored, sometimes you you have to quit and you have to leave the that project to be free. <laughs> But sometimes, sometimes you have to force yourself to finish it because if not, you're always starting new things. And I don't know, I, I, I love to, to start and finish things. And not, not always it's, it's something easy to do, but I try to exercise that. And I, wa I want to accomplish that. I want to finish things. So, yes. Well, it's incredibly important. I remember the first uh, guest we had on here was Rare, and he was talking about self-discipline. And it's really hard. Like, I mean, I imagine it's hard for you at this point, maybe on a certain level, maybe you're bored with your daily drawing on a certain level, because you've been doing it incredibly. I think you've made deadline. I mean, you could be in the news business, Flora. You've made your <laughs> deadline for, I mean, we're on April 26th. Like, have you ever missed your deadline? And 
How about that project? I mean, there must be days where it must be. I think I've seen you tweet about that, where it's difficult. Yes. yes. There were days that I, I was like, oh, my God, why? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this to me? I, I am I am forcing myself <laughs> to do something that I don't want to do today. But I know that that idea is something that happens that particular day and the day after I will be okay with that. I think that it's really important uh, to have um, this discipline. Yes, because I don't have discipline in other in other areas of my life. You know, I don't have discipline <laughs> in anything. <laughs> I don't work out. I don't. Um, I don't eat well. I don't have discipline. <laughs> True artist. In anything. <laughs> and yesterday I was saying to myself, if I'm able to do one drawing per day, I have four months of doing this. Why can work out fifteen minutes a day? Why is it so difficult uh, for me to eat well? Why is it so difficult for me to do anything? Well. I don't know, but I think discipline is something that you exercise also. So it's nice to start with something little or, or with big baby steps, you know. For example, I I used to say, well, today I'm going to draw a half an hour a day. I, I'm going to read something. I want. I always try to do little things that change my day. So every day is more rich of meaning you know because if you don't force yourself to do those things we are with our digital devices every day in my case i have the cell phone i have the tablet i have the computer everything is turned on and i sometimes i feel like i'm going crazy because i all the day i'm all with my eyes in front of a uh, of a screen so um if i don't have the discipline of saying well, today I'm going to go to sleep, but, but before that I'm going to read a book or I'm going to, I don't know, meditate. I, I don't know. Anything that changed that way of living that we all have been into this uh, last few years because of the pandemic or whatever. We are so much in the, in the digital world. So I think it's really important to force yourself to do things that change that because otherwise we we are becoming robots. I don't know. Well, screen addicts too. Yeah. And, you know, I have a hack for the gym, by the way. Like what I always found it hard to go to the gym, but and maybe this doesn't work for other people. But, you know, luckily at, I go to classes, you know, like a, there's like weight classes and like cardio at the local gyms here and luckily in berlin they actually play good music in the uh, yeah. so it's almost like going to the club but really you're just going for a workout anyways classes because you have 20 other people there that are kind of looking <laughs> over your shoulder and you don't want to disappoint everyone you know <laughs> so uh yeah your ego is on the line a little bit so it kind of forces you because if i go by myself i will you know do five push-ups pat myself on the back and congratulate myself for actually <laughs> doing that and then off I go to, you know, drink a beer, right? So, yeah. and, and as far as reading, and, and actually I looked up Apuleius, it is the golden ass, that's, that's actually, I mean, the risque title there. Uh, it's a, the first novel, actually, it's considered, I think it was around 200 AD, a Greek in, in the Roman Empire, as far as mm -hmm. I remember. So a little on Apuleius there. So anyway, so welcome everybody who has joined us here. And look at this all-star cast again. And there's Mech.txt, EdgeQ, Rosatio, Martin, Joe, and Kant has joined us on stage. Our international program here, there's Dr. Version, Rennie Fish, big shout out, Retro Manny, who we had the great pixel art show, and on and on. Uh, so anyways, thank you everybody for coming. And if you want to come hang out with Flora on stage here and ask her a question, by all means, request to speak and we will bring you on stage. I may prank a few people along the way and send you an uh, invite. Kant, how are you doing? Uh, you're in Delhi, I believe. Hey, hello, Papa Belly, Rune Tuman, Flora, Ali, Minas. Uh, hope, hope you're doing great. Yes, from the New Delhi, wonderful. Everything is good. I had one quick point to add when we were talking about the discipline. Oh. I think it's, it should I should share something, something, I mean, my own experience with the discipline, artistic discipline or how we we keep ourselves in, in 
in you know certain limits or how we set some kind of rules for us uh, and it's always better because uh, since we are a freelancer in a way you know technically we are freelancers and we do not i mean we are we are our own boss so we do not have anyone to answer uh, so this could actually uh, sometimes it could become very lazy as well so we might push the work very further away to i mean the deadline or the the imaginary deadline we have so it's always better to set some kind of deadline and trying to stick to them so i mean within a certain time uh, the project is finished and for me what i do uh, because at the same time i work at least on three projects three different projects because if i'm working on some uh, like one project only uh, and and i got so involved in it i may get kind of bored out of it also and because of when 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 we are putting ourselves so into one theme so it it might become kind of sometimes lull you might get bored and you want some rest and you are taking rest from one project actually you can save your time and give it to the another project so for me at uh, i at one go i work on three projects so i can use my complete energy like 24 24 hours in 24 hours are used in in better manner and i set the deadlines as well so th this was something I, I thought that this is very relevant and i should uh, share it with others and i totally agree with you and i'm so glad you shared that and it's i find it's really hard to do though and i think it's so important again it's all back to self discipline right because put it this way when i'm you know art can always be the thing that slides in your day, you know, you have to send this letter out, you have to pay this bill, you have to meet this person. But so often, I think we make excuses for the art, like, oh, if anything can slide, it'll be the art. So I, I just think it's, that's what, another thing I just love about what you're doing here, Flora, with this daily drawing, because I, I understand it's not easy because you're trying to also maintain a certain quality control Right. And if you're there at 1155 p.m. and you got to make deadline, uh, it's like a newspaper. Right. And when you're saying, like, what have I done? I totally could relate with doing this YouTube show. Sometimes you're just like, oh, my God, you know, what would happen if I had those mornings again? So anyways, uh, Flora, I'm curious. You said you were able to buy an iPad. How has that changed how you work? What, what were you working on before? Well, it was something really life changing because well i was working with another tablet digital tablet but those that you connect with the computer and i am a person that goes a lot to other places i not so much in my home so for me having the something that i have that i can bring with me it's really practical i i don't know i it was really life changing because when i had the other device the, the tablet that you connect with the computer i didn't use it a lot so i draw uh, a lot in in journals and paper i was really analogic artist now i'm creating a lot of, of digital art but i also want to keep my journals and my i'm a sketchbooks because um i think you use the brain differently when you draw uh, on digital than when you do when you draw um, in, in paper, and it's something really interesting to to explore that 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 change. Um, and yes, I I try to to use both um, both types of um, drawings, but do you prefer one or the other? Do you prefer one or the other, digital or, yes. or just drawing on paper? I love both because of different things. I prefer drawing on paper because it reminds me of my childhood. I, it's something that I, it's like, like a thread that connects me directly with my my childhood. I don't know if I'm saying this well. I'm having this. Yeah, no, it, it, <laughs> it makes um, perfect sense. Like, yes. why do you draw? Because your style is very defined. I almost want to call it. And it seems to come again. I always get this sense of like this 1890s puppet show kind of vibe to it, you know? Yes. Uh, so, where is this all coming from? When I was, well, I told you this before, I'm a big fan of artist journals. And when I, you always said, uh, you always compare my drawings with Punk Jody. And I never saw that, I never watched that show. And it was amazing for me to Google it and to find out that. It really looks like 
that style and i i think that amazing how something that you never saw you never watch or you never saw can be similar to something that you're doing i don't know i i guess my style is a mixture of things i think that i love to consume i love to watch dark things i like the horror movies i like reading a lot of science fiction i like carnivals i like uh, costumes i like fashion i like i think that mixture um, is what my style is about without realizing because i don't do it like on purpose i like i create and i think everything that i read and i watch and i see everything is like in a mixer and then i create something that it's like a mixture of all of those elements well, beautifully put, it's almost like you're tuning into a kind of archetype, you know, like these. And yes. it's, it's also, there's something very theatrical. I mean, my grandma passed away now, was a costume designer at the theater, you know, at the university in the middle of Canada, University of Saskatchewan. She did Shakespeare on the Saskatchewan. And so it, it really evokes that as well, just this theatricality. Uh, yes, that are, are was... You, uh... Go ahead. Sorry, I, that was so lovely when I heard that about your grandmother um, in an artist journal. Actually, I, I studied fashion design, but I my dream uh, in the past, in my past years, when I was a teenager, when, when, when I was like a, a young adult, <laughs> I, I wanted to be a custom designer. I love uh, customs. So that's really nice to hear. That is hilarious. I, I, I think my mom's going to be listening to this. Let me just check if Lorraine is in the crowd. Bring bring Lorraine up on stage. No, I don't see a Lorraine, but I see Hestrubal Waffle and a whole bunch of awesome people, MVP. So if anybody wants to join the conversation with Flora, she's got a nice crowd here. Feel free to come on stage, you know, practice your public speaking, hang out with Flora, ask her some interesting questions. Uh, I have one more before maybe I turn it over to Runetune. Are you using Procreate? Flora? Yes, yes, it's magical. <laughs> I it love really that. is. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's amazing. And do you even bother with other, <laughs> with other? I mean, you're. No. So, yeah, I, I know <laughs> no. what you mean. I, I you know, uh, yeah, I'm trying it to has think. Has a lot of of things to explore, so um, I'm just in procreate right now. It really is all about those brushes too. And I use the word yeah. brush very loosely, whether it's a graphite pencil or a, you know whatever the case may be, but those textures, yeah. we're back to textures again. Yes. Uh, oh, I, I wanted to tell you something that uh, you always say that you like uh, in my drawings, you like the, those blurry lines that I, that's something that I wanted to do with this drawing, these daily drawings because i am doing them uh digitally but i wanted them to be like there's something that i hate about digital art it's like you can erase so easily and you cannot see the the mistakes and that's something that i love about paper that you have those marks when you erase so i use a lot the finger tool in procreate that finger that you can use and you can like um you can erase, but you you don't erase like with the eraser because you can see what you were doing before. So I think that something that I like about these drawings is like you can tell when I had some mistakes or when I had trouble with some part of, for example, the hands or the feet. I usually ha have trouble with those parts and you can tell because it's some blurry lines there. So I like to leave them uh, there so you can see it. You know, from a technical level, that was my favorite part that actually drew me in the most. I, it was this idea <laughs> of embracing the mistakes, you know, a Warhol idea, and also this kind of, you know, modern art idea, which sometimes we, I think Picasso was definitely, and we could even argue maybe the Impressionist a little bit, of leaving the trail of how the work yes. was made right and and there's something actually just beautiful i mean it adds this element and a real aesthetic you know sense like i mean it really adds to the work doesn't it yes yes i i think that's really important to embrace the the mistake 
And that's, I think that's something that really defines my, my way of creating because I, I've never been afraid of showing where I had mistakes. I love that and I love to show that in my art. I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to be um, something personal and something that has personality. And I think that mistakes are so personal that they are key elements in, in my way of, of creating things. Well, beautifully put, and they create texture too. <laughs> so yes, anyways, Rune Tune, uh, do you have any questions for Flora and everybody? You're welcome, yeah. you're welcome to come up on stage, just make a request and get some time with Flora Marquez, kind of who knows the next time that'll happen for you. So a oh, beautiful opportunity here. Uh, so go for it, Rune Tune. Something I always like hearing from artists is what was your uh, journey into NFTs and, and digital art? How did you find yourself minting artwork? <laughs> well, it was all thanks to my friend Tornado Rodriguez. She's here with us. Um, she was the person in charge of knocking on my door and say, what do you know about NFTs? Do you want to know about NFTs? <laughs> and this was on August 3rd and on August 4th of August, I was minting. I was so anxious about it. and. She taught me about everything I needed to know at the moment. Uh, she was a great teacher and I love her. She's a really good friend and a great artist. And you should uh, know her. And she's an OG in Tesos also. So I have actually just invited her to speak if she wants to come <laughs> yes. up. Uh, so that would be a classic moment. Sorry, Rintu. And then, um, you know, I also like to hear from artists, like what was your journey into art? What got you wanting to do your own drawings in? And who inspired you? Well, I think my journey as an artist is like join is, is like all together with my life. I cannot separate both things. I think that creating art for me was a way of expression. As children, we we draw as a way of communicating because we don't speak. But then when we start speaking, we stop drawing. But in my case, I think speaking wasn't my <laughs> wasn't my I wasn't so communicative I had a lot of issues with with communicating what was happening to me when I was a teenager so I think art and drawing was my way of making this kind of catharsis I think and it helped me a lot socially and psychologically <laughs> and I think it's it was more like therapy. My artistic way was more like, like naturally because I was doing that bec because I, I had to. But now I consider myself like an illustrator or an, or an artist. But when I was 26, 27 years old, I was like just doing what I had to do to make my, myself more comfortable with my life. I don't know. Yeah, I think art serves that purpose for a lot of people. I know a lot of my friends do it for therapeutic reasons. And, you know, for me, too, I, I do it just as something to kind of like keep my mind going in a singular direction, you know? Yes, of course. Well, we have good news. Tornado Rodriguez has entered the stage, so a magical moment may ensue here. Tornado, <laughs> welcome, to the, welcome to the show. Where are you calling from? Are you also in Argentina? Hey, how how everything is doing there? Hello, oh, we're doing Hello. Uh, It's a little cold out here in Berlin, but otherwise doing great. I went to the gym this morning, so I'm super happy about that. Oh, that's yeah. good. I don't go to the gym. Yeah. I'm like Flora. I don't do any workout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I... Uh, Hi. So tell us... How... I'm so nervous to be here. Yeah, no, thank you for coming up. And so tell us, uh, and, and okay. we're just having fun over here, so no big deal. So how did you guys meet? Well, I, I have been like a big fan of Flora's work, like forever. I'm from Argentina too. Flora is from Cordoba, and I'm from Buenos Aires. We live like eight hours away by car. We haven't met each other like in real life yet, wow. but I like, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Once we were at the same place at the same time, but there was a wall 
in the middle and we haven't seen each other so that was crazy that's crazy it's kind of poetic yeah do you guys plan to meet at any point i wish i don't know we... like maybe yes, that would ruin it i don't know I'm joking. I'm joking. I was thinking maybe that would ruin the, the mystery of the whole relationship. But, uh... No, no. I think we we would have like a lot of fun. Yeah. We talk like every day, like long WhatsApp audios, like really long. Oh, that's great. Is it yeah. an artistic relationship that you both have? Yes. Oh, that's great. Yes, from the beginning. Well, here in Argentina, like illustrators, like everyone know everyone. You know. And we know everyone, we know everything about everyone. So, yeah, I knew Flora that way, like uh, from Instagram, from colleagues. And, and, and I always love Flora's work, um, like big fan of Flora. Well, that's great. And Flora, do you have anything to say? Yes, I'm a big fan of, of Tornado, of course. I invited uh, <laughs> her to participate in a magazine that we have with a friend here in Córdoba. Yes. Uh, that is called Sierra, and Tornado participated there, but we didn't, we didn't meet, and and that's something that we have to plan soon because we have to meet. We have to yes, know have to, I have to go to where you live because where I live is like bad. <laughs> where you live sounds like more fun. <laughs> Yes, of course. Well, this is great. And Tornado, you might need to mute your microphone when you're not talking because there d does seem to be some background noise. Oh, Maybe you're on the sea or something. It almost sounds like <laughs> the sea. There we go. Just for sound quality. Flora, you've made these stickers and everything. I was wondering to myself, like, have you ever shown in galleries or anything? Or what's, what's your experience? You know, it sounds like you've come to NFTs in the last couple of years and you work really physically. Like, what is your experience as an artist kind of up to this point? No, I don't have a lot of experience. I was invited once to show my work as a comic artist here in my town because I designed the logo or the graphics for a theatrical festival. Oh, cool. Here in, yes, here in Córdoba. So the government, I did a drawing and they used, uh, and they used that as a graphics for the, the festival. So they organized me uh, like a, a show for, for my, my pieces that I had at that moment that was like really specific humor, uh, comic daily pieces that I, ha that I had done for a digital magazine here in Córdoba that I did weekly. It was like a series of comic stripes. They showed that. Now, is this the Las Pieras fanzines on your... No. I think... Okay, that's something else. Yes, uh, Las Piras uh, is a project that I have with a friend that is a magazine printed uh, in Riso, Risograph. Oh, cool. And, yes, and we show the comics and uh, art from female artists from here in Argentina, from different places, and it has five numbers. Uh, we stopped in the pandemic, but we are planning to do the, the number six very soon. Well, that's super interesting. I mean, it really reminds me of Uxine, who also came out of a zine culture, you know, and yeah. it, I can, I, I see it, you guys, I can just see the visual experience just in your guys' work, you know, and just the composition, you're a graphic designer. So tell us then, uh, what do you have planned? So right now, I guess, are you focused primarily on the daily drawings? Do you have anything else on the menu? I guess you're going to do another issue of Las Pieras. Uh, what else? Yes. Well, I have to finish some pages of my comic diary so I get to complete my number four or because I, I do the scenes. Oh, scenes. scenes. Like scenes. magazine. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Thank yes. Uh, uh, I'm, I publish my comic diary as zines so i have three numbers yet so, and now i have to finish the number four and i want to finish that because it's taking me a lot of time to finish that and of course uh continue with the daily drawings and making some art for foundation and yes la fieras is like a priority for me because it's something like in real life and i love real life i love to get out of the digital sometimes so La Fieras is something that I want to continue doing 
Um, yes, a lot of things going on. Well, it sounds super exciting. And if anybody wants to come on stage in the final 10 minutes here, you have a chance to talk to the one and only Flora Marquez and Tornado Rodriguez, sometimes partner in crime here. <laughs> Do you sell your work online? Because you seem like the kind of artist that you could start an Instagram account, and you already have one, of course, but where you could actually yes. sell. I had a, a an online store where I sell my work, but um, it's no right now i'm not i'm not doing that um it's a lot of work actually so i stopped uh, my my online store but i i do go to fairs and graphic fairs and comic fairs and i sell my scenes i uh and my illustrations and stickers and i'm always going to those places I love them. Yeah, I could see you fitting in right in there. And it's kind of <laughs> funny. It's really hard to go back to physical, like shipping physical art once you do yes. the NFT, you know, blockchain thing. Because, yes. I mean, it's zero shipping, right? I mean, you put it up it, it and it's a real, like it's an afternoon of your life sometimes to ship a work, right? Yes. Yes. And it's... Um... Here in in Argentina, we have um, a lot of laws with the, the thing with the art shipping. It's really expensive if you have to ship to another country, for example, works of art. It's almost impossible. So, yeah, it's, it's some it's really challenging that. So that is super interesting. I mean, you know, it's funny. Like when I was sold a painting let's say i was just talking about it actually i think last show this shoes oil painting and i had to ship it to canada there was this whole thing where you have to sign a form if you're yeah. shipping an artwork more than a thousand dollars because these countries they want to make sure that they're not losing their precious art artifacts like is that what's yeah. going on in argentina as well i don't i'm not sure if that's it but i i know that it's really really expensive i asked a friend here because someone wanted to buy my do you remember when i you showcast the, that in your artist journal when i paint uh something in analogic and someone wanted to buy that painting from me and he was he told me that he would pay and um, for the NFT, and then I I could send the piece, but it I, it was so difficult. And that friend told me that if I'm going to send the the piece, uh, the, the the art, I I shouldn't say that it's uh, art. That was it. Yeah, and like I had a similar <laughs> experience as well, where it's like, okay, uh, <laughs> let's just say it's worth five hundred dollars. You know, like yes. they let them check I, up I, on me. I don't know what, yeah, they, they don't make it easy. I mean, you'd think yes. being an artist is hard enough. And I think the shipping was like $250 to your point. So, yes. I mean, it was a, a similar situation. That was outrageous. Uh, Michael Macasso, welcome to the stage. It's great to have you here, also known as mech.txt and now kek.txt. Michael Macasso out of Indonesia, how are you doing? Hello, Adrian. Uh, I actually accidentally <laughs> pressed the button, but since I'm in, in the stage anyway, Flora, I've been a fan of your work and it's very encouraging to see another artist who do things daily, including like you and, and the other ones like Grigala, I think. Okay. So maybe a little question for you. How do you find the motivation to do different themes, different kinds of stories each time you, you do your art? I personally do my dailies as well, but I, I think two weeks behind I've been struggling a bit because of the real life um, job that I have because I'm not a full-time artist. Yes. But just just curious to see how you do your, you know, like art thinking, like which kind of a theme do you go today and which one do you want to do for the next day and stuff like that. Maybe you could tell us a bit of yes. story about that. Well, Flora. I don't have like something planned. Never. <laughs> I don't plan anything. I just I just go with the flow. You know, I, I wake up and I. I grab the iPad and I start drawing and I try to not to have anything like clear. I, I let my, my hands to do the, the job 
and I, it's really amazing to create like that because I get surprised of what it come out and I don't have anything in mind so everything is a, uh, like a surprise to me I sometimes I, I say why I'm drawing this I what is what what I'm thinking about and I think that's the way I feel more more comfortable creating because I don't get so much uh, bored if I know what I'm going to do next I'm bored right now I, I I don't want to do it anymore but if I start creating without knowing where I'm going to be that's exciting and that's that's the motivation for me to not knowing where I'm going I absolutely love that and it I totally agree with you like it becomes like work when all of a sudden it's like okay here's my task and I'm gonna do this and then all of a sudden it's hard and it's not working. Whereas it's so cool, uh, and I love how you put it, uh, how you get surprised by yourself. Because isn't that true uh, with art? How often it is that you'll make work that you never would have expected that you would have made or that you could have made even. And yeah. there's a deep lesson there. Like it's a profound point for me. Yes. Yes, I hate creating because of for for instance if something is selling more you should do more of that i hate that i love creating things that just came to to my hand or to my brain but without knowing if um, they are going to like or not i i like the 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 magic of not not knowing and um I think that's that's a key element in my way of creating to not knowing anything because if I know what I'm going to do it's like something planned and as you say it's some it's like sounds like work and I don't want my drawings to be well it is but I don't want them to be my work I I want my drawings to be a pleasure and I always fight to keep that as a pleasure place, not as a place where I have to be obligated to something. That's my universe, and that I want. I, I want it to be my my mine, and I want it to be fresh, and I want it to be unique, and I want it to be personal and my own. So if if I know what I'm going to do, it's because something has contaminated my 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 brain and i i like to not knowing i like to be a uh, that that the drawing it's a surprise and it's something that i don't know why i'm doing it uh, you're so quotable flora you're ready for the big leagues i think here uh, final thoughts here from Tornado Rodriguez, uh, I'm so glad you came up here. Again, another magical moment on this show. Tornado, any thoughts here as we kind of wrap up and get final thoughts from people? Oh, I don't know what to say, but just uh, I wanted to say that for me, Flora was a person that changed my artistic path, inviting me to Las Fieras and something is a person like, like an amazing person, you know, that people that you met and something clicks so i admire her a lot so keep your artistic friends close i love it i love you, I love you too <laughs> there's our magical moment here mech.txt any final thoughts here just a pleasant night uh for for tonight i think and thank you very much adrian and flora and Brunton as well for holding the uh, the space, the awesome space, just like always. Thank well, you. Well, thank you for attending. And uh, you just got a uh, voice for radio, uh, mech.txt. So come up anytime. It's wonderful to have you here. And Flora, any thoughts or anything before we turn to Rune Do I have a voice for radio? I think so. <laughs> just understood what you said. Absolutely. <laughs> I, like I said, I'm you're so... totally quotable. I, I, I can't wait oh, to I, like, I, cut up this program and it's like well, it's I, magic. Well, I have two things. Two things to say. I, my, I'm so thank thankful for being here. I'm. I want to thank you, Pocavelli and Runtun and everyone. And another thing that I wanted to say is that I I listen to Artist Journal to learn English, and to and to practice 
and I learned a lot of things. For instance, when you say, well, you use this a lot, Adrian, you use this um, quote unquote thing. And it, this, this one was something that I, I will treasure forever because I need it. And when I learned that, I was like in heaven. So quote unquote. <laughs> <laughs> that is I, I need it. I, I needed that in my life. Well, I'm glad, you know, you're not the first person to mention the learning English <laughs> part too, because you can put the subtitles on. I mean, it's pretty amazing. I just watched yes. this speech. Which, in... by the way, your English is fantastic. Oh, Flora. thank you. I, I, I just, um, I, I watch a lot of series and I watch a lot of TV trash th shows. So <laughs> I think that I, I learned a lot of that. So thank you. I, I'm so glad that you understood what I, I had to say. I was afraid that I, I wouldn't be able to speak what I wanted to. Have. You're excellent, Flora. You're thank totally you. good to go here. Thank uh, you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. And so thank you for coming up on stage and joining us and giving your time. Runtune, any final thoughts before we go? Uh, no, thank you for yeah coming on stage, sharing your story. That was very interesting. I look forward to seeing everything else that uh, you create, especially these drawing a day. It's, I, I can't imagine doing that. That's a deadline that I don't have the stamina for. You never know, Rune Tune. Maybe you just got to do it. And then, you know, you just, you, maybe you'll surprise yourself. It's true. I, I, um, I mean, I could. I, I, I definitely could. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, thanks, everybody, for showing up, everybody who's listening, everybody who came on stage. And thank you, especially Flora, and as always, Rune Tune. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, take care.